Hi, so today we are going to discuss pressure, variation of pressure with the pressure measurements, buoyant forces and Archimedes principle and we will solve some examples. So when we consider fluids we will consider a simplified model of a non-viscous fluid that does not sustain shearing forces. And this is possible because uh, the interatomic forces between uh, uh, the interatomic forces are weak in a fluid, so which makes it not possible to lock to lock atoms in position with respect to another. So the only force that exists in a fluid is the is one that is perpendicular to a surface. Okay. Uh, uh, why does this uh, or from what from what does this force results? Uh, so it results from collisions of the molecules with the surface, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, let's first say define the pressure. The pressure is force over area. It has the unit of Pascal, which is one newton per meter squared. And so each collision reverses the molecule's velocity component that is perpendicular to the surface. And this will result in a tiny force from impulse momentum theorem. A huge number combined each second will result in a constant microscopic force spread out over the area of the surface. So when you consider a fluid, uh, you, uh, this is the force uh, that the fluid will exert on uh, a surface that it is in contact with. So let's consider now the atmosphere. Uh, you know, the, atm the atmosphere is a huge amount of fluid over the Earth, right? So the atmosphere exerts, exerts a pressure on the surface of the Earth that is equal to P0, equal to 1.013 times 10 to the power 5 Pascal. And this is equal to one atmosphere atmospheric unit. It's another unit to measure pressure. So let's consider the hydrostatic pressure in a liquid, uh, how it increases with depth. So it increases with depth according to this equation. So here we have the atmosphere and it will exert uh, a pressure on the surface equal to P0, right? So the pressure here is equal to P0 plus rho GH. And rho is the liquid density and G is the gravitational acceleration, which means, uh, so this equation means that the pressure uh, is the same at all points having the same depth. It also shows that any increase of pressure at the surface, if we uh, change this value, will be transmitted to every point in the liquid. Now this is, no, this is known as Pascal's law. So Pascal's law uh, states that a change in the pressure applied to an enclosed fluid will be transmitted undiminished to every point of the fluid and to the walls of the container. So one application of Pascal's law is the hydraulic fluid, uh, is the hydraulic lift. Okay? It is a force multiplying device. So if we apply pressure to a small area here, A1, uh, through a force F1, so according to Pascal uh, law, it will be transmitted through a liquid to a large piston of area A2. Um, and since the pressure is the same at both pistons, we have uh, P, F1 over A1, is equal to F2 over A2. And so F2 is equal to A2 over A1 F1. And you can see because F A2 over A1 is much uh, larger than uh, 1, uh, it will multiply the force. It will multiply the applied force F1. And this is how a car can be lifted. So now <clears throat> let's discuss how the atmospheric pressure is measured using a device known as the barometer. Uh, 
It consists of, of a tube filled with mercury with one closed end that is inverted into a mercury dish. Uh, the top end is nearly vacuum. Uh, so the pressure at B, we know it's equal to the atmospheric pressure, right? This is open to the atmosphere. It is equal to the pressure at A. And uh, 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 because they are at the same level. And we can calculate from the hydrostatic uh, pressure equation uh, the pressure at A uh, equal, you know, so we have to consider the depth of this uh, fluid. Uh, so it's equal, which means that the pressure at B, P0, is equal to rho mercury GH. And it is found that one atmospheric pressure corresponds to a mercury column of height of 0.76 meter. So this is the how the atmospheric pressure is uh, measured using uh, the height of an inverted uh, mercury uh, tube. So the open tube Manometer is another device to measure pressure. Uh, it's used to measure the pressure of a gas contained in a vessel. Uh, so the pressure uh, at all points on the dotted green line is equal because they're at the same level, right? And if you remember from the hydrostatic pressure equation, the pressure here, we can find it is equal to P0 because this is open to the atmosphere, so it's P0 plus rho GY2 is equal to P plus rho GY1. Rearranging this will give uh, P minus P0 is equal to rho GH. Uh, so P is uh, known as the uh, absolute pressure and P minus P0 is the gauge pressure, is known as the gauge pressure, okay? Uh, so, the following arrangement can be used to measure the density of oil. So, oil is added to a tube containing water. By symmetry, the water columns below the green dotted line are in balance. So, we need to balance the oil column with the remaining column of water. So, in equilibrium, the uh, pressure, the pressure of the fluid in the right and left must be equal. So we know that pressure here is equal to P0 plus uh, uh, rho G oil H and the pressure here is equal to P0 plus uh, rho water uh, this height H, this height is H minus T. P0 goes with P0 so we are ended up with this equation and from this equation uh, we can find the density of oil. So now let's consider Archimedes' principle, uh, which states that an object partly or wholly immersed in a fluid experiences a buoyant force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the object. So the object will displace an amount of fluid, and as a result, it will experience a buoyant force directly directed vertically upward that is equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. So this force, so it acts vertically upward through the center of mass of the displaced fluid. The buoyant force is independent, is independent of the composition of the object because it is the force exerted by the surrounding fluid. To show this, let's consider a solid cube immersed in a fluid. So the pressure at the bottom directed upward is equal to Pb, so there is an upward, upward force Pb times A and there's a downward force also from the pressure of the fluid is equal to P top A. Because there's an upward force the uh, pressure uh, uh, from this side is greater than the pressure downward. So uh, and the resultant of these two forces will give us the upward buoyant force. Uh, and from uh, we know the uh, we know from the hydrostatic pressure equation how to calculate uh, P T P top and P B and the difference between them is equal to rho fluid G H 
uh, and times A. So H times A is the volume of the displaced fluid. So the buoyant force is equal to rho fluid G V displaced, uh, and this is the volume of the displaced fluid, and which means B is equal mg. M is the mass of the fluid displaced by the object. So the mass is equal to rho times V, right? And for this uh, wholly immersed object, we have two cases. Uh, well, first let's see what is the weight of the object is equal to mg, uh, which is equal to rho object g, V object. Um, the buoyant force is equal to rho fluid g, V object 2. Why? Because the displaced fluid volume is equal to the object's, vol object's volume here in this case, right? So B minus W is equal to rho fluid minus rho object G V object. Um, so we have two cases. Uh, the resultant force uh, uh, is upward in this case if the rho object is less than rho fluid. So if the object's density is less than the fluid, it will accelerate upwards. If the object's density is greater than that of the fluid, it will accelerate downward. So in the case of a floating object, the object is in equilibrium, so the two forces are equal. The buoyant force is equal to the weight. The weight is equal to mg, which is rho object g v object. The buoyant force is equal to rho fluid g v displaced, which is the volume of the displaced fluid, which is not equal in this case to the volume of the object because it's not totally immersed as in this case where the two volumes are equal. Here, part of the object uh, is immersed, okay? If we, if you solve these, if you solve this equation, you will get this. This is represents the fraction of the object's volume under the liquid surface, is equal to the ratio of the object's density to the liquid density. So let's see now how Archimedes' principle is used to know if a statue is made of gold. So according to legend, Archimedes was asked by the king to determine the purity of his crown. Archimedes solved the problem by weighing the crown first in air, then in water. Um, so in the first case, if we neglect the buoyant force of air, the reading in the scale T1 is equal to the weight of the statue uh, W. Now that we know the weight of the statue from this reading, uh, the statue is, is then uh, the statue is then immersed in water, and uh, the buoyant force then will reduces the scale reading to T2. It will be less than T1 because it's equal to the weight minus the buoyant force. Uh, so using this reading, we can calculate the buoyant force. And since we know the buoyant force is equal to rho water g v displaced, and because v displaced here is equal to v statue because the statue is whole, fully immersed in the water, so the density uh, of gold can be found. It's, it's equal to the mass of the statue over the volume of the statue, uh, we uh, multiply by the gravitational acceleration and we know this one, this uh, value here is equal to uh, the buoyant force over rho uh, water and, uh, and, and this uh, is equal to the density of gold. So it's, it's equal to uh, the mass of the statue G rho water over the buoyant force. So if the statue's density turns out to be less than gold density, which is 19, which is 19.3 times 10 to the power 3 kilograms per meter cube, it means then the statue is not made of pure gold, right? So let's consider 
let's consider the point force acting on a balloon. Uh, so this point force is, uh, balances the weight if the balloon is stationary and the resultant force will be zero. The point force is equal to rho A V B G. It's, uh, this is the weight uh, of the air displaced by the balloon. And we use the volume of the balloon because it's equal to the volume of the displaced air because the balloon is totally immersed in the fluid, in the air. Um, so the balloon, uh, uh, if the buoyant force is larger than the weight, the, it will accelerate upwards. If the buoyant force is less, it will accelerate downwards. Um, and this depends on the density of the gas inside the balloon, which for hot air balloon is filled with air at high temperature. In the following slides, you will see uh, some solved examples. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my video. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, see you in my next video.